What's up, guys? Um, it's Brian. I'm back after a bit. Um, yeah, so I just watched Tim's uh, Hey, It's My Birthday video, so happy birthday, Tim. Uh, sorry I missed it when it was, was your birthday, but, you know, I got to it. So um, so I, I've been mentioning it a bunch of times that I've got a large collection that was still at my mother's house. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I... Well, not a couple weeks ago. Not this weekend just passed, but the previous weekend, I got up there and uh, and I and I picked up, I think almost all of my books. So I, I got a, a bunch of my books from my mom's house. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't know where my second new comics is this week. And to be honest, I really haven't gotten to read much of them because of school and uh, and work. So. Um, I just briefly kind of went through some of my books or boxes because you know, they've all been up there since like 2000 and the end of 2005 so I gotta replace all the bags and boards um, yeah so it's gonna be that's gonna be a chore um, I'm thinking about going with um, I'm thinking about going with the e Gerbers the uh, the my light twos and the half bags so but they're a little expensive. But anyways, so I'm going to ask for a little bit of advice or opinions on that. Um, if you guys have used the My Light 2s and the uh, half bags from eGerber, uh, let me know what you think of them in the comments because uh, I'm getting tired of replacing bags and boards. Um, seems like every, like constantly. So um, it's my understanding that if you go with the Mylars and the, in, in particular the eGerbers, it's my understanding that... Um, it's one and done. You can you not worry about replacing your bags and boards for decades, from what I understand. Um, please, please, somebody let me know if that's uh, some opinions and uh, whatnot on that. So, right now, I'm going to just show you a few books that I pulled out of my collection that was at my mother's house. And the first one is um, from, again, one of my favorite, 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 favorite artists. And it's. Uh, it's an ash can, and it's the ash can for Monkey Man and O'Brien. Um, I, I'm telling you, I just, I just can't get enough of Art Adams's uh, work. He's without a doubt one of my favorites of all time. So this next book's gonna look familiar to you because it's Monkey Man and O'Brien number one, and, um. Yeah, so it doesn't have a date on the top of this right off when these came out, but as I recall, they came out in, I don't know, the early 2000s, early 2000s, and so when I saw that he was doing a book of his own that he was writing and uh, penciling, I had to snatch him up and absolutely, absolutely love this. I just wish that um, there was more Monkey Man and O'Brien. Because it was a fun read. Um, it, was, it was a nice science fiction kind of thing. It wasn't superhero um, science fiction all the way, and it was pretty cool. And right here, I've got um, so that last one was two or three of three, and this one is not sure exactly what it is. Uh, I don't remember. It's been a long time since I read them, um, but it says presenting in one magazine for the first time the origin of Monkey Man and O'Brien. So here that is. Oh, I'm covering up somebody's face. Yeah, and uh, as far as Art Adams goes, I, I, I just, I just can't say enough good about his work. Um, I wish he did more, but you know, you'll have it. Um, so next up is another one, another artist that I really, really like a lot. As far as I know, this is the first work that I recall. This is the first work of his that I bought. Um, and I stuck with it for, the, for this entire entire title because his work just blew me away. It was so clean and so nice. And on top of that, the story was really really awesome too. So um, Carlos Pacheco, and it did, like I said, uh, Kurt Busiek was pretty good too. I mean, he he always usually does some good work. But the Avengers Forever number one. Um, it's one of my favorite Avengers stories of all time. Um, it's it's got Kang in it. Uh, it just and I think when I was a kid, I really didn't read much of Kang because I got into the Avengers books in the the mid '80s. So 
Kang really wasn't around. The only thing I knew about Kang was that I read in um, the Marvel, uh, the, the official Marvel handbook, and I didn't have access to back issues when I was a kid like I, like we all do now. Um, so I really didn't read many of the, the old Kang stories, but due to this series, um, uh, this is Avengers Forever Number 2, due to this series, or the, this this title here, the story arc, um, Kang's one of my favorite Avengers villains now. Um, I'm working on filling in my Avengers run, um, and I really, <laughs> really want to get down to there, get down to Avengers number eight. Uh, that's his first, his first appearance. But one of the things I like so much about this story arc, um, here's a, here it is, uh, issue three. Now they're still flapping because I want to reread these because um, it was such a great such a great story um, so I just left them unflapped or untaped so I can read them you know I know which ones I still need to read now what I liked so much about this was that it, he it, it got Avengers from all different timelines and it wasn't just that you got Captain America you got Captain America who was like I guess at this the, the time period that they pulled him out of he was kind of like uh, you know questioning himself you know what, what's he doing being Captain America and, and whatnot and then um, there's a cat here's a, a Captain Marvel from the future uh, Hawkeye I don't remember exactly when the what timeline he was plucked out of but I mean you see you got giant man or Goliath I think he's calling himself at this point and then you've got a yellow jacket at the same time so it's two Hank pins and you know, when he was Yellow Jacket, he was a total tool. So, I mean, they pulled all kinds of different things, and they pulled Mockingbird out of the future. So I'm, I'm still looking. I'm still waiting to see when Mockingbird is like an Avenger, um, when she does become an Avenger, because it can't go and fuck with the timeline, right? Um, so then I've got issue number four. This is a Frank Quitely cover uh, variant, and then there's a Jeff Smith variant. And there's a regular cover and one other variant that I don't have, um, but I'm I'm probably gonna try to fill those in just so I have every book. You know how it is when you're a collector and you have that urge. And then we have issue number five, number six. Cap uh, questioning what he's doing there. Uh, I got two copies of number six for some reason. Here's issue seven. Light's horrible in here right now. Sorry. Anyways, there's issue seven, issue eight, and again, um, Human Torch and Vision. At the time, he was thought to have been, you know, the same body there that he was built from, that the Vision was built from the old androids or Human Torch's body, but I think they changed their minds on that. Now here we have issue number nine. And even even at this point in time, they still had the uh, approved by the comics code stamp. Um, if you notice on the older books, uh, for you younger people who don't under, don't know about the comics code, the stamp was huge back in the day. It was like this big, seemed like. And over the years, it's just gotten small and smaller until it's just completely disappeared. Uh, issue number ten, really nice. I mean, all of these covers, particularly the ones by Pacheco are just they're just amazing this guy's work is just awesome here's issue 11 and we're gonna wrap this up with issue number 12 uh, if you haven't read Avengers forever I can't recommend it highly enough um, I think it's one of the greatest Avengers stories ever told um, okay so that's some of what I pulled out of my uh, back issue in here's a, like a handful of stuff it's kind of almost it's kind of random but it was just things things that I was looking at um, I got Thunderbolts number one and it's signed I don't know who signed it because I didn't I didn't get the autograph and uh, it doesn't really matter to me but anyways it's supposedly signed by one of the uh, creators uh, good book then out of my pile of junk, I pulled out the Amazing Spider-Man 491. It's a J. Scott Campbell cover, which is really nice. And then 
43. I don't know why I have this in this pile because it's a John Romita Jr. cover and I think he's the worst thing to ever happen to Spider-Man. Um, here's 481. I don't know who did this cover right off the top of my head. I don't see a signature on her. So then we're going to move on to Harley Quinn number one. Uh, yeah. You know, I... I think I've said it before. I like Carly Quinn, but I just don't think that I don't think she has what it takes to to hold down her own story, her own title. I just don't think I, I think she's an amazing supporting character. And this is also a Terry Dotson cover, by the way. So if you like his work, this is good stuff. But I just don't think that Harley Quinn has what it takes to hold down a, a book. On her own, I just don't. So, all right. So my last Craigslist haul, I showed some Batman books, and I was like, "Oh, I need six, six, twelve, or something like that." Well, unbeknownst to me, because it'd been since like 2005 since I'd seen these books, and these were put out in 02 and 03, anyways. Um, here's some Batman books by Jim Lee. Here's 608. All right, that's a little better. So that's 608. 609. I forgot I even had these books. Here's 610. Completely slipped my mind that I had this Hush storyline. 611. And here's the one that I was saying that I was missing, and it's 612. I got another copy of 613 with Harley Quinn on the cover, who, yeah. And I'm not sure what the deal is with this book. I, I think it's a hot book for some people. I'm really not sure. But I picked it up. When I was back in my uh, Marvel Max days, uh, it's Alias number one. I, I don't really remember reading this. I'm sure I read it. I just don't really recall what happened in it. Um, somebody go ahead and let me know in the comments and all that stuff. Now, let's see. We're going to get into a stack of books that I just love. And um, I think like most any, any kid... In the 80s and 90s and, you know, who was into comic book culture at all, probably was um, intrigued by Miss Betty Page. I mean, how could you not fall in love with Betty Page when you were, you know, discovered her back then? Uh, she's amazing. This is strange. I got, like, stars on the back cover. I, that's weird. I don't know what that's all about. So anyways, this is um, Dave uh, Dave Stevens. Looks like a, a Dave Stevens cover. And y'all know I love his work. So anyways, this is issue one of three of Betty Page, Queen of, Pen or Queen of the Nile. Um, so then I have issue two of three. And again, I th I'm pretty sure this is Dave Stevens' work. Because it doesn't say Dave Stevens, it, but it does have his initials, and they look very similar to the way he signs his. So I'm going to base it on that. So there's issue two of three. Now this next one I don't believe is part of that run, but it is a Dave Stevens cover. Um, on this one I can't find, on the cover I can't find a, a cover. And I think, I think I have the other book somewhere, the issue three. But anyways, this is another Dave Stevens cover. And... You can't go wrong with his work. It's just amazing. Um, 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 um. See how many times I can say um. So while I was on my way back from my mother's house with my load of comic books, I was passing through Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And uh, I crossed over, I don't, I don't remember what river it is, but I had to cross over a bridge to continue my journey back down here to Virginia. And right after you get across the bridge, I noticed something I had never noticed on my trip back before, and it was a comic book shop. Um, give me just a second. I'll see if I can find... I think they had a business card from them. Yep, here it is. So it's uh, America's Most Wanted Collectibles, and... <laughs> They scribbled out their address because I don't think that's address is correct anymore. But anyway, um, 
I think this is probably the correct address. Anyways, if you're in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, check them out. Uh, they have a very square footage is pretty big store. Um, I think they could do better job with that square footage because I'm a short guy and I was looking through some of their back issues and I'm five six and they had their top shelf the, the the top of the box on our top shelf was was here on me so I was had to get on my like and they had like three or four shelves and but they still had a lot of square they had a lot of open space in the store where they could have set up some tables and spread those those out at a decent height so short people can get to them so anyways um back to yeah so planet comics number one beautiful cover by dave stevens uh that's where i was going with this i stopped on my way back at that store um america's most wanted and i picked up this is one of the books that i picked up there and i'm just showing this now because it's dave stevens and i bet stack of betty page books was um, mostly covers were done by Dave Stevens. So, Dave Stevens, awesome. Um, so, unbeknownst to me, I completely forgot about owning these books. Um, it, I found this in my stack of my collection from my mother's house. That's 141 and 142. Totally forgot about them. So now I have, I think I have three copies of these books now. Um, I bought one copy because I was, um, I was like, man, I gotta have those. I gotta have those books, blah, 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 you know, because the movie was coming. Not because the movie's coming out, because I wanted to get them before they skyrocketed even worse. So I got those, and I, one day I was on eBay, and I just found another, another set. So I've got like, I got like three sets of these books now. Um, now we're gonna go back to my collection. This is one of my favorite um, one of my favorite stories also it's uh, again the whole thing is done by Art Adams as far as the covers and the interior work it's long shot number one uh, man Art Adams is just amazing again I, 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 I keep kissing this guy's ass but it's because I just love his work um, yeah, issue number two I picked these up in Pensacola Florida when I was down there in like 98 I was going to recruiting school and I discovered a comic book shop, and I don't remember what I paid for. I think I paid twenty bucks for all six or seven of them. Um, and this right here, folks, is how the She-Hulk should be drawn. Not whoever that crappy ass guy is doing right now. I hate to say it, and I've said it before on here, but I fucking hate She-Hulk right now. I love the character, but the pencils are terrible and. That book's not going to last long because of it. Anyways, this is issue four. Here, let's get a better look at her. That's how she should be drawn. Amazing. Uh, here's issue five. Yeah, you can see how badly these books need to be. These these bags need to be changed. Look, at, and they're all rippled like that. And I bet you the insides are all yellow too. Here's issue six. So that's it for Art Adams and uh, Long Shot. Oh man, that last long shot series they did. I was I was kind of hoping for something like this, you know, something good. But that last long shot title or series, fucking terrible too. And I'm a sucker for buying it. All right, um, here's another stack of books. This entire stack right here. I picked up at that uh at that store in Williamsport. And this first book, now I'm looking at it better, closer, it's kind of crappy condition, but whatever. Paid three bucks for Daredevil 196 because it's got Wolverine on the cover. And I found 183 for another three bucks. I got Thunderbolts number 104 for a buck. And I got The Mutant Master Continues in Daredevil, issue 238. And I didn't realize this at the time, uh, but this book is also an Art Adams book. So, but it, like, honestly, this cover kind of surprised me that it's Art Adams. Because 
it lacks a lot of the detail that I'm used to seeing in his in his work. But I don't know who did the interiors. I haven't read it yet. Then I picked this one up just because I like the cover. Uh, Fantastic Four 287. I think this. I think this next. I think this next pile here I got for. I don't know, I think they were in like the 50 cent bin. Yeah, all these books were in like the 50 cent bin. So I got this, um, that book. And hitting up my Avengers run again with 248. Avengers 249. Avengers, I'm sorry, that's not two, it's three. They're in the 300s, my bad. 372. 350. I think I already have that. I think I might have a couple copies of that. 362, 361, backwards. 356, 357, 359, 364, 365. This is a nice cover for uh, for the vision. 367. 371, 376, 379, and then I'm going to take it way back with Avengers number 92. You see I paid eight bucks for it on the cover there. Um, that almost ends, almost ends this video, but there's two more books here that are pretty nice um, that I'm happy to have picked up. The first one is... Did you see that? I don't know. But it's uh, X-Men, number 52. And these are in Mylar. They came, they came in the shiny stuff, you know, when I bought the books. So this is uh, 52. Paid 25 bucks for it. It's, it's a little bit rough, but I mean, and it looks to me like it may have the, uh, the subscription crease. But I think they folded it differently or I, here, I'll show you what I'm talking about like you can see like right here there's a ridge you, you can see it right there and then there's scuffing right there and down here in the bottom there's scuffing so I'm pretty sure this thing suffers from the uh, the Marvel uh, subscription fold oh um I mentioned before about the my lights and the halfbacks. Um, if you've used the halfbacks and the fullbacks, could you let me know your opinion on those? Uh, cause I'm not. Sh I think this is probably a halfback. It's, it feels kind of flimsy to me. I don't really want that kind of thing going on with my books. Um, yeah, when I get uh, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna dole out the money for the expensive bags and boards, I'm as well get the best protection I can. So anyways, that's event or that's X Men number fifty two. Uh, I think what's this cat's name? Uh, Eric the Red, something like that. Yeah, anyway, we'll see when I get in there and read it. Then the last book that I bought at that store, actually, I think it's the last book I bought. No, yeah, it is. It's the last one in this pile. I, I just showed you the last book I bought earlier, though. So anyways, this one is um a, the X Men. Number 49, and I paid 60 bucks for this. We have a copy of this at the store that I work at, and they're asking like 100 bucks for it at the store, and I, I honestly think this is in far superior shape to that book. So even with my employee discount, I got a better deal by buying this one. And, and, and the one at, at, at work has, it's like, got some you know, writing across the top. This is, I think, I don't know, these, like, the 4 mil, the Mylar, or the Mylite 4s or something. Anyways, yeah, I'm really, 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 really looking for opinions on the, like, this might be one of those, the fullbacks, because it's pretty thick. And it's pretty sturdy. Anyway, folks, uh, got an itch. So, hey, um, yeah, I'm stumbling now, I'm stuttering, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about.
Anyways, thank you for watching. If you got this far, and again, Tim, happy birthday, man. Uh, glad to see you got some nice birthday gifts there. So, oh, I just noticed I'm up to like 50 subscribers. So, hey, thank you for subscribing, folks. Um, probably going to put it off for a while because I'm kind of like money's getting kind of tight for me right now. But So I'm probably going to put it off to like, like, I don't know do a contest when I get around 100 subscribers or so but anyways thanks guys and you guys have a good night and to steal a page from hippie collect what you love love what you collect good night